Hi, uh, my name is uh, Martin from StratChat and this video is for new and nearly new players of Crusader Kings 3. I'm going to show you everything you, uh, that you need to know to go from being a count in Ireland in the year 867 to become the king of Ireland in very, very short order. Uh, at the moment we've got all of the uh, currently released DLCs and expansions um, on. Let's get into it. So the focus is going to be on military conquest. Now we are a tribal ruler. We can find that out from the realm tab. Tribal, tribal county, tribal authority. And tribal uh, leaders can attack their neighbours without uh, casus belli or with a, a very, very straightforward. So here we have a chap here. Uh, he rules these two uh, counties. We want them off him. Uh, we can right click on him and we can declare war uh, whenever we want and uh, claim one of his, uh, one of his counties. But let's have a look at just how, how strong this particular individual is. He has 935 soldiers. He has 500. 500 of those are light footmen and 100 of those are bowmen. So let's have a look at our own army. Well, we also have uh, 500 light footmen, so that's kind of equivalent. We have very, very similar numbers of levies. Uh, we also have 100 bows, actually very, very closely um, aligned, uh, very, very similar in kind of our military. So let's try and um, uh, increase this somewhat. Um, let's, uh, in fact, as he has 500 light footmen, if you look at uh, bowmen, bowmen actually um, counter skirmishers. Um, light footmen are, are skirmishers. We have 450 prestige, so if we increase all the way up to five, we've got no prestige left, but we're all the way up to five, uh, we're going to have a much, much bigger, um, we're going to have a much bigger military than him by the time these soldiers have raised, and we should be able to take him, take him over. Another thing that we can do is we can have a look at our um, champions. These are very, very much elite soldiers. We have one chap here, fifteen prowess. This is the important uh, number for um, for battles for for for, um, for our champions. Um, let's. He's he's he. he all these are already our champions. He's in our court, but he isn't a member of our court. But we can recruit him. It costs six. He would be our most powerful knight, so for six gold. I think that's probably worth inviting him. Now, he will have replaced the one at the bottom. Um, and we have a champion here of four. So he's replaced uh, uh, Brakeen, who, let's face it, isn't a particularly powerful looking knight. So that's just improved our knight position. Right. Next thing that we want to do, and this is before we even start the uh, the date counting, is we want to see if we can use unmarried people in our court to attract people to our court that will make us um, even stronger. So uh, just have a look first down here. These are our councillors. We can't do anything. We are our, our Suffering bishop is we, we get who we get. Um, he's uh, actually not bad as a, as a bishop. Uh, we, we don't... Uh, he doesn't particularly like us, so what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on him and we are going to sway him. And we have a 69% chance of him increasing his opinion of us by, by 25. There are reasons why uh, it's quite good to have your bishop on your, um, on your side. We have got a terrible spy master. We've got a weak marshal. We've got an awful steward. He's actually also our, our um, son. And we have a very, very good chancellor indeed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these people to just attract a few people to the court that might be able to help us in our war. The first is I want a really, really good person to be our physician. The physician is a, a court role, um, and it just means that if your knights are injured in battle, they're much more likely to um, to be kind of, to kind of recover. So we're going to get this guy here because he's such good diplomacy. We want to keep him around. We want to we want to do him, do him, do good by him. So we're going to see if we can find him a wife. Um, the, we're looking for a court physician, essentially our doctor. So we're going to sort by. We're going to go into here. And we're going to type P H Y, starting to write the word physician, and we get this trait. These traits come up. Uh, I'm going to click on um, on this the renowned physicians, the highest tier, and actually there is a person here who would marry him, Pia Tanel, and uh, she has that trait. Um, so uh, what will happen now is that when they agree to get married, and we, and we know that they will, 
um, she will come to our court and we can make her our physician. There we are, we'll accept. Okay, so we know we've got a great physician coming. We haven't got a great marshal, and actually there's no one in our court with brilliant uh, military uh, skill. We don't have particularly good military skill ourselves, although we're one of the best in our, in our court. Um, we have got somebody better, uh, Fiadaku. He's, he's, he's got 14, so we, we could use him, and there's no harm in doing that. That's, that's improved him somewhat. But if we go to our court, look at the courtiers, and look for an unmarried female. Dubdil is an unmarried female. In fact, she's our disastrous spy master. Uh, we can look for a partner for her. We're going to have to reset the filters because it's looking to see if there's a renowned physician for her to marry. Well, we don't want that, so there should be uh, hundreds of people that she could potentially marry. We want it to be a matrilineal marriage. When man and woman get married in this game, um, certainly in this culture, the woman travels to where the, hus the new husband is, is residing. And we're trying to bring somebody from another court to our court. So it has to be a matrilineal marriage. It will limit her choices somewhat, but um, there's no, you know, otherwise we lose, lose both of them. Um, we want somebody who is an able soldier. Eid, aid. He's an able, able soldier. He's also very young, which is nice because if he grows in strength, he's going to be able to become better and better over time. Uh, vindictive isn't the greatest uh, description, but um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to take a chance on his personality. He's vengeful, lustful, cynical, but he's, a, he's the best general that we, we can get our hands on at the moment because of this martial strength. So we're going to marry him to Ide and we're going to bring him, bring him to our court. Uh, I believe, yep, we got another woman here. She married Ben Ulad. No, she's not. So we can use her too. Um, we can use her to look for somebody. So we've got a great general because we're looking at kind of military conquest. We're only thinking about the kind of military aspects of our um, of our strategy at the moment. So we can look for somebody with prowess. Now there's this chap here. He's a giant. He's likely to have very very good prowess. 19. If he, I can track him to my court, he would be my strongest knight by a long way. So I'm going to uh, offer him a matrilineal marriage. I nearly forgot. That's disastrous if you forget. And all of those people should now come to our court. Now, if I were playing this game properly, I would go through all of those. You can use all of the people who are not married to bring uh, people with qualities to your, uh, to your court. I'm now going to get married. Going to marry myself off. Um, so I need. So I'm quite elderly. Well, I'm 47. I'm not that elderly. I could still potentially have children. I've got one son, who is unremarkable. So if I had somebody uh, better uh, as an heir, that wouldn't be the end of the world. So I can have somebody of childbearing age. If I didn't want to confuse the succession, I could choose somebody who was infertile. But I'm going to. I'm going to attract somebody with very good overall who got some of all skills right failing so let's have a quick look at her she has got a good range of different skills um, she's very young she will no doubt have more children she's Irish she'll fit right in at my court I'm going to invite her to be my wife um, I ought really to have somebody for my son because he is my heir at the moment so we'll find somebody for him um, and I think what we'll do is we'll sort by Go to traits and we'll look for somebody with some inheritable traits. So the, there's a possibility that these get passed on to uh, my grandson. Um, Hale is, 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 is good, pretty is, is good, but I'm really looking for the well, intelligence ones. So Perrin would be good because she's quick. She might pass that on to our children. But more Muan, she is uh, even better, she's intelligent. So we're hoping that gets passed on to our children, plus three of each of the uh, sort of um, aspects of, um, of, the, of the character. Okay, so that's, uh, so that's good. Let's have a quick look at decisions. Now I really want to call a hunt. Calling a hunt would be a really, really good idea, but I'm short of money, so I'm gonna have to let the game play for a little while until I've got enough money to call a hunt. Uh, that will be a way of producing some more prestige, and you saw how prestige is really important. In building a powerful um, military when you're a tribal leader. Our leader has the is in the diplomacy tree 
um, you know, you can you can sort of uh, have some control over which of these lifestyles he has. But he has he's forty seven years old before the game starts, so he's already been working on becoming a great diplomat. And in fact, he's quite quite impressively he's worked his way down through this middle tree. Um, I think I'm quite happy with that. A lot of these. Uh, perks actually improve his prestige gain and its prestige is, is really important so I think we'll stay in stay in this uh, diplomacy lifestyle for the, for the time being uh, instead of changing to one of the the others it's always tempting to go to a martial one if because we're likely to be in a lot of war um, but um, this actually supports our war effort because uh, we are able to get additional prestige um, I'm going to go for the majesty focus uh, because the Majesty Focus is going to give us plus one prestige as well as a, a somewhat some improvement to our uh, diplomacy. Uh, before I press press go, I might just have a quick look, see if there's anything up there. Uh, so none of these uh, none of these things uh, I need to worry about too much because that's 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 done. That's we're working on that uh, physician. We've got one hopefully coming. That's going to be really good. Uh, declaring wars while well, we're preparing our military for exactly that so let's press play and you can see the uh, offers for marriage you've got the acceptance is coming in all these people are joining my court and we need to uh, in a second have a look at uh, our council and see if we are able to fit a few people up into new positions so our commander is here so he's going to be our marshal but we have got our wife so we can we can we're going to select for her chivalry is not a terrible idea she would add plus five to our, our militaries it might be that with her focusing on supporting me as a, as a military leader we might actually be our own best general when we go to war we'll see about that for the moment i'm going to put it onto a uh, ruler where you get a small bonus to each of the attributes um, while we're here, let's look at um, Iden, what he's actually trying to accomplish. We've got two tasks we can set him, training commanders or um, organising the army. Both of those things will improve our army, but we'll stick him onto train commanders at the moment. It improves night, night, night effectiveness, uh, and that's actually quite important. If we have a look over here, we'll see that we have our 19 Amaric. He's turned up, so we've got this sort of, this sort of uh, better uh, night um, and very quickly have a look see if his wife has arrived I thought she was gonna be right so she's the physician that's right so let's let's do that so with the arrival of our uh, wife very often at the beginning of the game you get this this option you can either collect 75 gold um, because um, you're collecting money in because obviously you're not gonna you don't want to pay for your own your own wedding or you can allow you can pay for it yourself and you don't get the 75 gold you get 350 prestige in, instead very always very tempted to go for the money but actually 350 prestige will allow us to increase uh, the size of our army again all right, at this point, we've now saved up 17 gold. Now, if we have a look at the decisions, we find that we can now call a hunt. A hunt is a really, really good way of reducing stress. We've got a little bit of stress. And you can see that down here. Um, but also, it's a way of getting prestige, usually. So we're going to sound the horn and find out what happens on our hunt. So we've got an interesting decision here. The hunting trip has been less fruitful so far than some of the party appear to have given up completely. Um, I'm not going to read it all in detail, but essentially we got a couple of choices here. We can either get an extra 75 prestige, but Ellie, this uh, guy that recently joined our court, we, I don't seem to remember paying for him, will be will lose some opinion of us. And he's he's not a big fan anyway. But you know what? He's not landed. He's not that important. I'm uh, I'm very happy to, to accept him not liking us too much. Or we can spend 35 um, prestige and gain some learning lifestyle experience. Uh, or we can gain some uh, piety. Uh, we're we're going to go for the prestige, 438. It's quite a lot of prestige. This hunt will end shortly, and we'll get another 150. I'm going to pause it for a moment. We've got nearly 600 prestige. Let's go and look back at our army. We've now got a full complement of five regiments of um, bowmen, and we've got five of light footmen. We've got money to build something else. Let's go for the real tough guys, the armoured footmen. 
These have the highest um, um, damage and uh, toughness factors in, in, in Ireland, this part of, the, uh, this part of history. Uh, they're very, very expensive. We're not going to be able to get a full complement of five, but we can certainly get a couple of regiments. Here we go. Right, so probably get another one. Yep. So we got about 50 left, but we have got a very, very powerful army um, on the way. Let it, we're going to let it play for a while and allow those regiments of armoured footmen to mount up as well as the bowmen, because we're not yet full up with those. So just having a look, we got an interesting event here. My wife is, uh, is pregnant, so there's nothing we do about that. We just wait for to find out what happens, whether we have a boy or a girl in nine months or so. Just having another look at, uh, at Tommond here and our, um, the guy that we want to take his kingdom from him. He's actually, his army has actually increased somewhat. Um, he now has, um, actually I was wrong earlier, he only had 200 footmen, he's potentially got 300, so he's gonna be getting stronger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attack now. We've got much bigger army and most of our army is professional. Uh, 800 of his are levies. So we're gonna attack him now. All we need to do is right click on him, declare war. Usually early in the tribal era, you don't have a lot of options for the reasons to go to war, the Casus Belli, but we we can just try to conquer one of his counties. We could choose either of these. I'm going to go for Tommond. I think it's the most valuable of the two. Uh, we could check that, but I, I just think that it is. Um, but also, uh, it's the one that's nearest to us. It's going to cost us a little bit of piety, because we're attacking somebody in the same religion as us, and we're at war. I always do this with the game paused. Uh, and then I think about where do I want to raise my army? So there's, the, there's my flag. Let's just make sure it's as close as possible, which it is, to the destination. That's definitely not what I want to do. As close as possible to the target. I'm going to raise all my armies. I'm going to have a look at my commander. There's Ide there, young man, 16. Wonderful. It is worth considering that if I put my wife onto Marshall, I get an additional five, which would actually make me much better than I. So let's let's do that. Let's go to our gun council, change her to supporting chivalry, which will be plus five to my um, to my marshal, uh, and then you see I'm on twenty. I'm now our best uh, best commander. It's not entirely tr uh, straightforward because obviously I also has some military uh, bonuses, and you'll certainly have some later in the game. But for the moment. That's, I'm leading my own army. Right, we're going to go up to that city there, and we're going to that county, and we're going to take it. You see, we're probably going to win this battle. That's really nice to, to know. You will probably win. Relatively easy victory. We'll just have a quick look at the, at the losses. We actually lost 138 men total. They lost nearly 600. Now what you'll notice is that we are in this uh, fortress, uh, we're sieging it. This is, the, this is their, their, their fort, if you like. It's going to take us 10 months, but when we get there, we'll have, uh, we'll have, we'll have won this war, hopefully. So let's uh, speed through a little bit. So actually our son's given birth. Uh, so no, he hasn't. His, his wife has given birth to a son. He didn't get the, um, the trait we were hoping for, the, uh, the intelligent trait. But nonetheless, he's um, an, another another help to guarantee the, uh, the 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 line. And I've got a son myself, so this is my second son. It'll be interesting to see if he develops better than uh, the older son that I've already got, because uh, I, yeah, he doesn't look like a, the greatest leader. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to educate him. And I'm going to educate him myself, so I can make decisions about his uh, his development as um, as time goes goes by. You, you can see that uh, the enemy uh, went and got uh, regained some strength, and they come back and they uh, they they fought me again. I've actually won the siege of Hammond. I think if I win this battle, it might be that we're very very close to winning the war. We've got 77 from holding castles and the zero from battles. Interestingly, let me slow it down a little bit so we can see what's going on. Okay, the battle is over. So we have indeed, um, we can enforce our demands. We got to 100% and um, he has no choice but to accept. I am now master of two counties. We got Desmond and we've got Tommond. Best thing to do is to disband your army really quickly because it'll start 
uh, rebuilding. Um, that's the best thing to to do and start thinking about which place are you going to go for next. Okay, I've paused. Our army is not quite up to full strength yet, but it's getting with all our footmen, all our bowmen, and we are um, most of the way with the armoured footmen. Um, let's have a look at the next person we want to attack. We want to attack Chieftain Dunchat of um, of Ormond because that will make our third duchy. Uh, sorry, our third county, and we can uh, have the Duchy of Munster. Having a look at him, he's got only 331 soldiers. He should be very, very easy to defeat. But he does have an ally. And chances are very, very high that his ally will come in and help him. So we need to have a look at them. As it happens, they've got 824 soldiers, uh, mostly like footmen and bowmen. Nothing that we need to be scared of. And it's going to take them some time to get over to the battle from, from Devon. So I think we can very, very comfortably take him out. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll, uh, we'll declare war on him. County, Ormond, 25... Move this a little bit closer, and we are going to initially, uh, if we raise all men at arms, we won't raise our levies, and that will mean that our income won't go down because our, I guess our ordinary men will still be like sort of work in the fields or whatever. So let's try that because this is a relatively weak opponent. Let's go. So we got the battle coming up. If I just pause for a sec, you'll see that we are going to win this battle decisively. No allies have joined. Well, his allies have just joined the war, and we can actually see um, in here that he now has 1,172 soldiers, and we have more than that. But we need to be ready to raise our levies and bring them in for the fighting if um, if it looks like we would otherwise lose. Right, we've had a really, really good victory. We've also captured some people. Let's have a just look in our in the courtiers tab. We've got two, we've got two prisoners. We've got this chap here, who's a reasonably good um, a knight with a prowess of nine, and this guy here is also reasonably good with um, with eight. If we just look back at our own, uh, you know, we have we have. Um, our weakest one is 10. So actually, we haven't got a lot to gain from recruit because because these guys are prisoners, we could potentially recruit them. But to be fair, they're not much. They're not. They're not. They're not better than what we already have. So for that reason, uh, we won't release them now because they could potentially rejoin the army that they were fighting with. It's quite good that we've captured these people. Um, but at the end of the war, we'll just uh, we'll just release them. So uh, we're now going to siege down Ormond. It's going to take eight months. Um, you can see that the siege progress is one uh, per day. So we can see the uh, Duke of Cornwall is on his way with his troops. What I'm going to do is just raise all of my um, all of my armies and I'm going to send them in to reinforce, just to make sure that we don't, uh, you know, things don't go wrong, basically. See how my income has gone down because of that. Okay, so we've won. Um, we've got another little batch of prisoners. Um, this guy is not particularly useful. This guy that is not bad. Um, Ten is not a bad, uh, not bad prowess. So we can consider releasing him at the end of the war. What you'll absolutely notice is that we've absolutely destroyed this army. It was 822. There are. F it was under 826. There are four still uh, in, in, in the game. Let's carry on sieging down this city. See how it's gone to 1.1 a day. That's these siege events. Every 20 days you get a random siege event and yeah, that, that, can, that can go up and of course it can go, go down as well. All of the time our army is... Actually we can combine these two armies. So obviously these are the... Um, these are the levies as well as the professional soldiers. Okay, so interestingly, we've just captured the actual uh, the actual chieftain. Um, if we have a look at the victory conditions thing, we've got a war score of 100, but it's not because... But it's actually because we've got this prisoner. 
it's not because of holding their holdings. If I release, if I press enforce demands, all hostages will be released. Now that happens when their chieftain is already um, it's already been um, been captured. I could wait for the siege to finish, and I would win at that point. Undoubtedly, I'd be on a hundred percent. And in the meantime, I could actually just ransom this guy. Here he is. Um, there he is. Ransom. So I could get fifty gold uh, for ransoming him. It's it, the cost is that it's going to take me longer to actually def defeat him. But I need this money in order to be able to form the duchy. So I'm going to I'm going to let him go. Interestingly, I've uh, won the siege and I've captured him again. He paid the 50, of course. Um, right, all hostages are going to be released if I uh, do enforce demands. There wasn't anybody I particularly wanted there. I, I mean, could I just, could I, could I ransom him again? Yeah, let's go for it. And while we're here, we might as well get rid of all the other, all the other prisoners. Uh, this guy. I'm not going to go through all of them, but obviously you want to get rid of some all of these uh, these prisoners. Uh, this guy, for example, isn't particularly valuable to me, so I'm just going to gain a weak hook and uh, and let him go. We got this young lady here. Quite like her to join my court because she's not married. Negotiate her release, and we're just going to go down and we're going to do basically like what she's got claims to Ennis and Thomond. Now I've got these are places I want to rule, so she can renounce those. I'm going to recruit her as well. So I've just got to wait for the uh, the chieftain to pay the money for his ransom. That shouldn't take uh, very long. There he is, he's paid the 50. I've now got loads of money and I've still won because I've got a hundred pound, sorry, hundred pound, a hundred score for controlling all of his castles and I got another 50 for battles. That's obviously well above 150. Now I don't need to give up the uh, the prisoners. In fact, most of them have already released one way or another. Force demands and I now am in the proud possessor of Desmond, Thomond and Omond. If you remember, well, you don't need to because you can look on, click on this. With uh, the Duchy of Munster, we now we ticked all the criteria for creating it. So I am going to create it. It's only going to cost 87. I'm going to get some prestige. I am now a duke. Notice we get another men of arms thing. So we've, we're allowed sort of like sort of three. We were allowed sort of three. Uh, regiments I suppose um, and each can go up as high as five well now we're allowed an additional one so when this is completed when I've got all of these done I'm going to um, expand it um, it's again in fact let's let's increase this because I've got a load of prestige from becoming a duke uh, disband our uh, men of course and really that's that's the first step the second step is obviously going to be to create a second duchy and to start working towards this control of eight counties. We've already got three. We only need five more. And we've got a new way of being able to do it. Let's have a look at this. So this is, now we are the Duke of uh, Munster. We can see if the Count who's independent is interested. I don't think he will be. He's quite annoyed with us. But see if he wants to be vassalised. We have the option to try and vassalise him, offer vassalage. He's not going to accept. We can see what the reasons are. So there's a base reluctance of 50. You can't do anything about that. But I am his true ruler. But I've got a minus 50 because I just waged war. Now eventually that will go away. So if I wait, eventually, um, I, I don't be really quite close to being able to, to vassalise him. The other thing is that he's, his opinion of me is very, very bad. So I could potentially try to sway him or even bribe him. And gradually his opinion of me would improve. And um, and he would probably agree to be uh, my my vassal, but that's in the distant future. For the moment, what we need to do is we need to find ways of quickly 
um, annexing additional territory. The other thing is you can see we've got we're allowed to run three uh, domains. Our domain is, is, is the equivalent of three holdings. We now have those three. Um, so we kind of, kind of like full up. It'd be interesting to see if I change my wife to support my stewardship. I wonder if that would go up to four. It all depends. It does. Right. So I can potentially have another county uh, in my um, in my domain. So I can afford to capture one more. If we have a quick look at our realm, you can see we th this the, the one we started with is making lots of money. These aren't. And the reason is because the control is so low. A little trick. Then you go to your council. You get your marshal. And you choose this, it changes his job. He has been improving the army, hasn't he? He's now going to basically introduce some control into, into Thomond. That will speed up the process of my control in Thomond improving, uh, but eventually to 100%. When it gets there, we'll have um, all of the income from Thomond as well. That will take nine years, um, but uh, we, may get, uh, we may get things happen that help to speed that up in, um, in the due, in due course. Right, I'm going to let the game play a little while to restore my full military strength. I just paused the game because I did just become the head of the Irish culture. This, for this playthrough, this isn't particularly important, but um, in, in, if you're playing a longer game, it is. Um, I'm actually going to change it to, to city planning. It just means when you become the culture head, you can take some control over the culture. And uh, in this case, it's going to be about selecting the innovation that your culture is kind of like sort of working towards. I've just successfully swayed my bishop. He thinks I'm OK now. Um, I could keep going to these on 100 percent, but I think I'll go and work on s somebody else. It's always worth having a good friendship with your um, spy master. So I'm going to try and sway her for a while. Uh, she likes me, but only 30 percent. We can get that up much higher make it much less dangerous for me if somebody was uh, trying to uh, to kill me. Now I've also, I can have more champions. Now this is because I've become a duke, so I've had a little look. Uh, we've only got seven champions, we could have eight. So have a little look down here. This guy is a five. I don't really want to pay for somebody as mediocre as this. Um, so do you know what I'm going to do instead? I'm going to go to my... Ah, I've got prisoners. Okay, who are they? Ah, this guy would do. Get him, re uh, demand conversion, recruit to court. Right, he'll do. This guy, uh, not bothered about him. And what's the. Yeah, let's uh, ask him to renounce his claims because they're on Irish things. Can we get a wee cook as well? We can. Now, I'm going to have a look at my courtiers, particularly looking for women, unmarried women, because unmarried women can be married off to making sure it's matrilineal. I can marry them off to, because uh, we're sort of short of good knights. Right, how good is Dietwin? Well, he would be our best one. So let's marry her off. Then we've got this young lady here. Um, what's our weakest? Uh, oh, we've got a terrible steward. Right, matrilineal steward. We've got 21. Let's get him in. I can press um, press go, and within a few moments those people will arrive. Okay, see our military is pretty much at full strength. We still got levies, but they grow so so slow. Um, we're going to have a little look around for our next target. And I'd like to take Ennis, and I can. Okay, I thought we had a truce. Truce is normally last five years, and you can't attack again. But who the 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 count there has died. And we now have this uh, young woman here, Ben Booman. Now she might be willing to, I might be able to offer vassalage. Yep, she'll accept vassalage. Bang. As soon as, uh, give that a second. So, right, she's become our vassal and now we control Ennis. If we go back to the realm tab, what we can see is this sort of slight improvement in Thomond. Eventually, Thomond will be a place where we're, we're making money and we're getting more levels. And we're getting 183 levels, it's not nothing. We also now have a vassal. She's sending us 72 troops, so our levies have increased. She's sending us 16% of the money that she comes in, which is effectively nothing at the moment, but even though that might that might very well very well grow. What is going to be our next target? Well, let's have a look at Osory. So um, this is obviously in a different duchy. In fact, if we click on here, you can see Leinster 
is uh, is a diff is a different duchy there. This guy has got a pitiful army. He has a claim on Meath, not really relevant to me at the moment. Um, this is a person that I can take out very easily. It's an army of 564. I have a much bigger army just of men of arms than that. So what I'm so I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to declare war for Osiri. Only going to cost me 25 piety. I'm going to move my rally point closer. I am going to raise men at arms only so that my income doesn't go down too much. I'm going to have a look who's in charge. I'm quite happy for it to be Eyed. I don't want it to be me really. I don't really want to die. And we're going to head for their capital. We've got a battle coming up. We are going to absolutely smash this battle. We win it very, very decisively. Sometimes you capture their leader and win straight away. You can see their casualties are very high in comparison to us. Not all of them are dead, but they're out of the battle. Let's have a quick look. We actually lost 41 soldiers. They lost 173. So we're now sieging down the castle. That's going to take us eight months. So let's get... Right. So we've uh, we've taken it. Um... There are we got a little bit a little bit of war score for for prisoners, but we got we captured all of his castles, so we can we can definitely ransom anybody that we've got. Uh, this uh, this must be his son, and they're prepared to pay ten for him. So why not? Who's this guy? Looks strong, uh, he's not particularly useful to me. Let's uh, gain a weak hook and let him go, um, and then we're going to. I don't think we can force demands because he's currently thinking about a proposal from me. Okay. Okay, so he's ransomed his son. We've got an extra 10 gold. Uh, we can go back uh, and we can enforce demands. And we are now the proud possessor of Osiri. And we do have a little bit of a problem in that all of our lands have got absolute terrible control apart from the one we originally had. It takes time for our control to catch up because our conquest is, is so fast. What we're doing, going to do is, is, is try not to worry about it too much. Um, in time, we will, um, we will get to have full control of these places. Now, what I really want is Leinster to be weak. Leinster is weak, so we can take them on the hop, really. We don't even need to rebuild our army. Let's, take, let's attack him. Interesting, and that battle was a little bit more even. But if at any point we feel we need to, all we could do is we call up our levies and send them to reinforce this uh, this battle. They're at home at the moment, churning out the money. And we need that to form this second duchy. They'll keep coming and attacking us, um, but we just keep winning the battles. The only thing we have to watch is that we keep an army bigger than the garrison, otherwise we stop gaining progress on the siege. But you know, we're, we're, we're a long way from not having that. They got an awesome general, which is really not helping us, but we are nonetheless winning. And we're given this choice here by the um, by the Pope because we have a religion that's sort of aligned to Catholicism, but has some very significant differences, including the fact that I could have had as like sort of four wives. Uh, the, the Pope doesn't really want us to do that; he wants us to change. I'm going to gain a level of devotion. Um, if we uphold it, or I can spend 500 um, and stick to the current... Yeah, so we're going to uphold Catholic doctrine, I think. I'm going to gain a level of devotion. Um, I can lose the marriage-altering traditions that conflict with Catholicism. It'll probably make it a little bit easier for me to convert to Catholicism later on. It's definitely worth converting to Catholicism later on. And gives you another, another thing to work towards. So I can claim victory there, I can expand my army, I can quickly sort decide what I want to do with the prisoners. Uh, this guy here, um, I mean gosh, how many times have, have, I'm sure I've captured him before. Um, and this guy, I mean you know he's possessed, yeah let's just, let's just get rid of him. Uh, get a weak hook, weak hooks might be useful later on. Now, 
Next thing I can do is I have now can have the Duchy of Leinster. All I've got to do is create it, 87. It's going to give me a big chunk of prestige. But I also have a problem. So just looking at our, moving towards our victory conditions where we're hoping to become the King of Ireland, if we again click on the, uh, the harp shield, you can see that we have now... Um, We've, kept, we've got two duchies, which was one of the things, so that's disappeared. We've got six of eight counties, so we only need two more counties, and we need 175 gold. So we, we can't let up, we've got to carry on trying to get uh, more counties, but we are above our domain limit. We can only have four directly under our power. We've currently got five. We need to give um, one of those away. What I think we're going to do is we're going to give one of these to our son. Okay, so let's find my heir. Um, and we'll do it this way. Grant titles. What can I? I can give him Thomond or Ormond. So let's give him... Let's give him Ormond because I'm not... Uh, it's, let him do the work of um, gaining control there. So I'm now I'm back four within four, but I still hold all of this land you know this one is i've got a vassal and here thorn my son is my vassal it's still all a part of my realm okay what's going to be our next target now ireland you've always got a problem that you've got ireland um you've got dublin here and uh jarl ivar the, ivar the boneless as he's sort of famously known is very powerful indeed we cannot attack him if we do attack him we will uh, very very likely lose although our army is getting close to as strong as um, his now it's much easier to attack these small um, Irish chieftains this guy is very weak but he's got a liege lord who will come to his re rescue so they're a little bit more powerful than they look uh, and then you've got Connor over here uh, this guy has got a thousand men but he doesn't have a liege lord he doesn't have any alliances we more or less have twice as many men as him in addition to that, we can probably increase our army somewhat. Um, let's look at, yeah, we can increase this to, to five. Okay, um, let's let's leave it at that for now. And let's give it some, t allow our army to recuperate. Right, so we're at full strength. So what's gonna be our, our target? Um, that loan is tempting, but it forms a duchy with with Dublin and I've already said I'm very unlikely to be getting that let's hit uh, let's hit Connaught right it's got a the old man's died so they've got a boy king let's have a, a, a ruler we could try to subjugate him this would cost us 500 prestige we don't have enough but the interesting thing is when you subjugate you win all of their territories actually his realm is three and it'd be quite nice to take all of those in one go can we find a way of getting some prestige? Um, I could commission an epic, but I'm short of money as it is. Uh, calling a hunt is not available until 872, March the 27th. Right, so this has become available in just a few days. But I don't have enough money for it. So this is what we're going to do. We're not planning to attack Athlone, so instead we're going to raid it. Has it got money there? No, it hasn't. Okay. This is, a, this is a plan that's not, not that good, that hasn't got. So I'm looking at these numbers here. This has 13, so I could potentially raid that and steal that money. Um, that doesn't have... These do, but I'm kind of thinking of... Um, I don't really want to raid them because I'm thinking of um, capturing them. But you know what? That's 45 gold there. Let's go on a raid. So let's move it to here. And let's all raise all men at arms and then turn them into raiders. Okay, right, they're going to go up here, a raiding. See, raiding is much, much quicker than sieging. Now we have um, 15 gold there. battle they will sometimes fight you to stop you raiding but you should win uh, so stay there right 
So we've got about 30 now, and we've captured somebody. Right, so I'm going to send them over here for the final raid. Oh, should we do Ulster as well? Okay, right, who's this guy? Oh, he looks important. Ransom. Right, they're not going to accept at the moment, but they might accept in a minute. And we're not going to be able to uh, raid Ulster. Right, we have another prisoner. Um, ransom. Get 10 for that one. Um, right, that's been raided. So right, I need to get these guys home. So let's take them home. Let's have a look, see if I can ransom anybody else. Right, he won't ransom. Is he of any value to us? Not really. Let's get a weak hook and send him home. These hooks, because I'm going to end up king of all of this territory. So when he goes home, I've potentially got a hook on someone in uh, in somebody else's court. So I'm going to let my army like uh, recover a little bit. Ooh, hang on. Right, so what we're actually trying to do is call a hunt. Because we want 500 so we can take him in one go. <laughs> Hunting trophy will improve my monthly prestige. Um, I can get a weak hook on Chieftain Concubar. Well, I'll go for that. Get 150, so we're close to enough prestige to de declare this war. Let's hold a feast. You sometimes get prestige through this as well. Welcome, friends. Okay, so this is really, really awkward because uh, the choices I've got are to lose 50, but that'll put me uh, over, overdrawn if you like, and you can't declare war when you are in debt, or um, I can gain 15, which, is, which sounds great, but I'm going to lose 75, and of course I'm only doing this because I want prestige, that'll take me below the 500, so I've got to hope that the next thing that pops up is good news. Here we go, right, I get 150, so that's all's well that ends well. I think that's enough. I've got 600, so I'm going to look at this young lad here, and I am going to declare war, and I'm going to go for a subjugate. Um, I could take all of his places one by one, but let's go for a war of subjugation. He's only got 290 soldiers. It's going to be an absolute walk over. Um, I'm going to raise all men at arms. I'm going to let them, right, I'm going to split them in two, one is going to go there, and the other one is going to go there, so we're going to see if we can catch two two places at once. Okay, so just check who our leaders are, he's 14, he's 18, are we going to win this? I'm a little bit worried that I'm making a mistake, I think we're okay. Okay, so I've now got two sieges going on simultaneously, I've split my force I've got to be very, very careful that I don't get beaten in detail. So just going to go on a fairly slow speed and watch what's going on. Right, it looks like we may have a battle brewing. No, he's actually uh, routing. So he's uh, attacking one of my cities. Osiris is under siege, but it won't fall for a very long time. And these cities are these places are about to about to fall. We're already on sixty-two percent. I'll send him down here. Okay, we've captured the actual um, Earl, so let's, let's enforce our demands. We are now in a very, very good place. We can expand everybody. The only, yes, so basically we've made him our vassal. So he's still there. I owe all of that. Now that's enough for me to become the King of Ireland. Uh, we can check that. We just need 175. So the easiest way to get this money is to go a raiding. We need to have a little look for somewhere. So we knew that the, all these places got raided, but what about Scotland? Is Scotland a good place to raid? Four there. It's not a lot, but it's not nothing either. It's got nine. See, brown heat, up like almost 20 from just that. The deeper you go, the more probably that we're going to get. 16 from there. Let's look at the realms. AC Strathclyde. Right, is Strathclyde... 
dangerous. If I send my army there, it's about 50-50, isn't it? Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to raid Strathclyde, but I'm going to take my whole army because I don't want to get um, my sort of um, professional army, like, lose, basically. So we're going to raise them all here. We're going to turn them into into raiders. We're going to get a better commander. Why can't he? He does not take orders from the army owner. Okay. What about him? We can we can we can bring them together. Say so, so. What we've got to do is we've got to do that, and then we've got Aid in charge. That's absolutely fine. Right. Brilliant. Okay. Aid is in charge of the whole army, and we're going to cross, and we're going to get some go raiding. We only need 175. We got 175. We're coming back. So we've got four. A big battle, but we, we win that no trouble. We've currently got 14. And these are much, much more risky. Okay, so we have 41 plus 44 there. It doesn't seem to be anything coming to get us. Let's go. Let's go and get a bit more. Let's be greedy. There's a big army over there I want to avoid. Ah, right. Can we get some money for this lady? We can get 25. So with 58, so we're basically on 125. How much do I actually need? I think it's 175, isn't it? Let's take them. Let's take them to there on our way back. Are there any other prisoners? No. Okay. Alright, so we catch. This is the last one we're doing because we're definitely dicing with death. We don't want the King of Scotland coming after us. Right, send him home. Let's have an alliance. No, let's not bother. So we're getting two per turn. You can also see places like Luminich. We're starting to get a sort of a little bit more money as the control goes up. So we're just going to let this play now until we get to 175. Okay, just to speed this up a little bit, I'm thinking of attacking Dublin. Oh, it's only got three loot. It's hardly worth it. Um, we could attack that. Okay, let's... Uh, Raise all men at arms. Let's go for start raiding and let's go down this way. I'm actually raiding the church here, which is great. Now I'm raiding the uh, tribal holding. I think when I come home, I'll have enough. Okay, so I've got 179 to spend. I can now go to Ireland and I can claim the title. Okay, I'm now the King of Ireland. I've got a number of interesting options. I'll be able to, uh, you know, to put up my dynasty banner and my house banners. I'm also going to be able to hold, um, uh, I'm going to be able to get vassalized lots of the other counts. Uh, so that's the point that I, I wanted to take everybody to. Let's just have a little look at it. Uh, let's go for, for one of those. Uh, we can we can hold court, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave you to explore it yourselves. Also, did you notice I've now got f an additional holding? I can actually have one more county in my holdings. Um, and if you look at my army, um, it's gone all the way up to five now. So I've got lots of possibilities of Im 
making my army bigger and, uh, and, and, and bigger. I don't actually control all of Ireland, but I can now give, put that question to people like this. Oh, he's already got a liege lord, hasn't he? But if I go to his lord, his liege, I can offer him vassalage. He's not going to accept at the moment, but in time, he probably will. I mean, the moment he's my rival, I think probably the best thing for me to do is actually to, to murder him. Or I can declare war. And now I just simply say, well, it's my claim. I'm claiming it because I'm the king of Ireland. Actually, I can be the high chieftain of Meath too. So I've got an additional range of um, Cassus Belli. It would be a very, very straightforward thing for me to uh, conquer pretty much the rest of Ireland. The interesting thing, of course, is how do I manage the succession? Because as you can see, this guy, guy is beginning to age a little bit. He's actually only 55, so he's about my age. Um, and he's got three sons, all of whom uh, will want their share of the, of the legacy and the inheritance. But I think that's got to be uh, for another episode. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.